Chicago Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. Smooth sack summer is almost over, but don't worry. It's Manscaped still going to keep you smooth through the fall as well. Get going today. Promo code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. The best men's grooming products on the market come from Manscaped. Link in the comments and in the description. All right, coming up on today's show, we got some news and rumors to get to here around the Chicago Bears, including a player getting poached off the practice squad. But first... Guess who's back? Back again. Mike Martz. Is he a joke? He is an absolute joke. Four smoking Jays. Bear down. F Martz in the chat. Mike Martz doubling down on his hate for Justin Fields. It makes no sense. Here's a quote from him on the 33rd team today. I'm just shocked at the Bears. They took the quarterback and spent a lot to get him. He was less than remarkable, and that would be the kindest thing you could say about him. I don't know if I've ever seen such a bad performance by a quarterback in his opening performance of the season. He was completely awful. He really deflated the football team, Mart says, with his performance. When you get a quarterback who can't do anything at all, you kind of lose hope. Right now, they're a team without hope. What in the hell is Mike Martz watching? What do you mean a team without hope? They won the football game 19-10. to 10. Oh, by the way, Justin Fields led a 19 uh, nothing run in the second half. That was a team that had hope throughout, had high energy throughout. What is Mike Martz watching? What is he talking about? Some reasons why the fraudulent Mike Martz is wrong. Number one, Justin Fields played really well in the second half. So this whole he couldn't do anything, second half, he goes five for eight, 102 yards and two touchdowns on a soaking wet field. Yeah, he played better in the second half. That's not a team without hope. That's not a quarterback who can't do anything. 19 straight points. Yeah, the hope was there. The energy was up. Bears played with great energy. And the Bears won the game. What do you mean this is a team without hope? This feels personal from Mike Martz at this point. I don't know if he has beef with Justin Fields. I don't know if he just wants to be proven right because before the season, he said Fields in this offense might be worse than the 0-17 Lions. It makes no sense. And quite frankly, it's just disrespectful and inaccurate at this point. How could you possibly say a team lacks hope when they go on a 19-0 run in the second half to beat a team that was in the NFC Championship game a year ago? It's a joke. Mike Martz is an absolute fraud. And if you agree with me, type F in the chat. Type F Martz if you want, because Mike Martz doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Seriously. Like, this is so out of bounds. It makes no sense. I think he's just like, well, I got to stick to my narrative here. You don't. You can be proven wrong. I'll give Chris Sims credit. He said I was wrong about Kellen Mond and Justin Fields. We get, we get it wrong sometimes, guys. Martz, you make no sense basing your narrative off that one game, a game that Fields and the Bears won. All right, next up on our rumors roundup, Bears fans uh, or Bears facing an angry Aaron Rodgers this week. Probably so. I mean, let's be honest. Four smoking Jays bear down. A, it's Bears Packers. You know Rodgers is going to be angry. And B, the Packers are coming off a loss. He's going to be pissed off. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I would be surprised if he wasn't. Packers coming off a 23-7 to loss in week one against the Vikings. A bad performance by him. A bad performance by the team. Only threw for 195 yards. Threw a pick. No touchdowns. Um, he rarely has two stinkers in a row. So, if the Bears are going to win this game, it's probably going to be against a good Aaron Rodgers, which would be great, right? If Chicago could win this game in a game that Rodgers played well in at Lambeau, then you're like, okay, this team could be for real. Could be absolutely for real. Roquan Smith commented on Rodgers. We'll get to that here in just a moment. Shout out to Manscaped. Uh, for sponsoring today's show, as I still have Mike Martz uh, in the back of my head. What an absolute loser he is. There's no way he goes to Manscaped. Smooth sack summer is winding down, but if your sack is anything but smooth, it's not too late. Get the lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code BEARS20. That's promo code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. Link and code in the comments and the description. The lawnmower is great. Advanced skincare technology. You can use this in the shower as the trimmer uh, is waterproof. Uh, you got a, a long battery life, a wireless charging station, four adjustable guards. If you want to leave a little bit uh, extra hair, maybe your girl likes it that way. Who knows? Everyone's different. 
Promo code BEARS20, manscaped.com, 20% off. Go check out Manscaped. All right, Roquan Smith on Aaron Rodgers. He was asked about a Rodg earlier uh, today. This guy is one of the greatest to ever play the game, and as a competitor myself, I love going against people like that. I'm sure he'll be a little bit angrier after this last game. Hey, he wouldn't want it any other way. Get the best version of him, then we get the dub, and it will be even sweeter. You win this game, that would be so sweet, especially if Rodgers plays well, especially if he plays well. Like, say Fields outplays him. You're like, whoa, let's freaking go. That would be absolutely fantastic if the Bears could win against a good Aaron Rodgers. So let's get it. Let's go. How about the opportunity, guys? How about the opportunity? And if you're watching live, my guy Sealand just sent in a $100 super chat. We'll get to that after this segment, Sealand. Hang with us here. But... The Bears going up against the Packers. You win this game somehow, you got a two-game lead on Green Bay. It's early, 15 games to go, but huge opportunity if you are Chicago and Matt Eberflus. It's Packers hate week. You know what to do. FGB in the comments on every video throughout the week. You should do it every video anyway, because that's the motto here on this channel. The FGB squad, the FGB army, ready to go here at Chicago Bears now. Type it more than once, spam it. I want to see thousands of them in the comments section. All right, let's keep it going here. How about uh, a little PFF action? Uh, Tevin Jenkins, Larry Borum, do they shine against the 49ers? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Three smoking Jays. They play pretty well, according to PFF standards. PFF can be a little all over the place. But I told you guys, the, uh, guys, excuse me, the offensive line played better in the second half and overall, I think, held their own in this game. Week one, Tevin Jenkins, who split reps with Lucas Patrick at right guard. I found that interesting. Jenkins outperformed Patrick. 77.9 overall, highest graded lineman by the Bears. 71.7 uh, .7 in pass blocking, 74.4 run blocking, over 31 snaps. Uh, Lucas Patrick played 27 snaps. His overall grade just under 66, so not bad by any means. Uh, that's about average, maybe a tick above overall. But no doubt Tevin Jenkins uh, graded out better there than Lucas Patrick. And then how about Larry Borm at right tackle? 75.3 overall, good both in pass and run block, over 72 on both, played all 58 snaps. Man, if 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 Tevin Jenkins and Lucas or Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum can be the answer on the right side of this offensive line moving forward, that's fantastic. They both only allowed one pressure each. That was good to see as well. No sacks allowed by either of these two guys. Bravo. Good job by these second-year linemen, and kudos to the Bears for being willing to shuffle things in the preseason in camp to figure out where people can play best. We'll see how this Lucas Patrick. Uh, Tevin Jenkins and even Sam Mustafer thing plays out. Mustafer's playing okay right now. I'll be curious to see what happens on that front as Patrick continues to recover from that hand injury. Couldn't snap the ball in week one. You got to wonder when he gets cleared, is he going to start at center? Because all three of these guys can't start. They can't start. Now, maybe they keep rotating at right guard. I don't know. I don't love the idea of that, doing that throughout the season. Uh, but let's say Lucas Patrick is healthy this week for Green Bay. Who are you benching here? You got center and a right guard. Obviously, Jenkins can't play center, but you either bench Tevin Jenkins, play Patrick at guard, or Mustafer at guard, and the other one at center. I would bench Sam Mustafer if all three are healthy. I would start Patrick at center, and then Mustafer can be your interior flex guy. He can play guard if someone gets hurt. He can play center if someone gets hurt. Who are you benching? Type SM for Mustafer, type LP for Lucas Patrick, or you can type TJ for Tevin Jenkins. All right, some news that actually slipped through the cracks last night. A lot going on around the NFL and around the Bears yesterday. Thomas Graham Jr., it became official today, poached off the Bears practice squad to the Bears active 53-man roster. So a couple of thoughts here. Number one, good for Thomas Graham. Um, I think he's worthy of being on a 53-man roster. And number two, it's unfortunate he got hurt in training camp because this is the guy that was getting starting reps during OTAs, during, during minicamp. Didn't play at all in training camp or in the preseason. That's why he didn't make the 53. He got to be available, and uh, that's just the way it turned out. I wish him the best because I think he's a talented player. I really do. I hope this doesn't, you know, come back to bite the Bears, but they clearly didn't value him enough, at least where he was at this point, uh, to activate him. So the Browns poach him off the practice squad. It is what it is. You just have to live with that sometimes. All right, uh, a story that dropped earlier today. I'm not going to get too deep into it. There's a lot of details and 
nerdy number stuff that I don't think is worth diving into at this point. But uh, there's a report out there that the McCaskies have a plan to keep the Bears franchise within the family after Virginia dies. Reason I'm not going to die too far into this. Number one, we hope Virginia doesn't die anytime soon. There's been some chatter about her health, but we won't speculate about that. Uh, and number two, it's just too early to even dive into those type of things. There's so much going on with the new stadium and Soldier Field, the current season, yada, yada, yada. But Sportico had the report. Uh, here's a chunk from it I found interesting. The Bears, whose owners declined to comment for this story, have a plan to keep the team in the family when Virginia McCaskey dies, according to multiple people familiar with the matter. Specifics of that plan weren't provided, but would require reconsolidating control of at least 30% of the team, which is now worth $5 billion into a single wing of the McCaskey family. A bunch of other financial stuff that, quite frankly, I didn't want to spend hours diving into because it's kind of financial expert stuff. Uh, so a lot of details not worth discussing. I think the headline here is... McCaskies don't appear to be selling, even when Virginia's out of the picture. There's always been this uh, thought of, well, does George want to keep the Bears after, uh, you know, Virginia passes? It's kind of in his control at that point. Does he want to do that? You know, he's never been a huge football guy. Uh, but uh, if this report is true, that would kind of put all that to rest, as uh, it sounds like the Bears would keep the franchise at least for the foreseeable future in the McCaskey family. All right, lots of news and rumors that we broke down there. F Mart's in the chat, total fraud. Hit that subscribe button here on Chicago Bears now. Videos all season long leading up to Sunday Night Football. Let's get it. Let's go. Subscribe today.